Hey guys, this is Jane from TDB, um, bringing you in between episode number 22, so excuse me, but uh, I'm a little bit under the weather uh, for this week, but I am still here and going to be brewing up some tea. So today I think we're brewing up the first non-poor in between episode. Actually, I was thinking back and I couldn't think of a time where I was brewing a oolong or a black or anything like that. Um, so we're, uh, I'm entering sort of a month of tasting through oolongs. For the first half, I'm tasting through yancha, and for the latter half, through a bunch of Taiwanese oolongs. And these teas, I made sure to price restrict, so we're not necessarily getting like the best of the best and the most expensive, uh, but we're getting um, teas that are good and price conscious, I should say. Um, and, you know, I, I don't drink a lot of wooey oolongs, and the reason being um, is that uh, it kind of ended up being a place where in order to really fully explore it, um, you would have to spend a dollar to two dollars a gram, really, um, in order to get the really, really good stuff. And, I mean, you could say 70 cents, 80 cents a gram. That's still quite expensive. And wooey oolongs, you just cannot slack on that leaf to water ratio. So it's kind of become, uh, not due to it lacking certain qualities, but it's become kind of a more casual tea for me. And sort of similar to Pu'er, it's structured in a way where there's a very finite amount of really good stuff grown, the stuff from like old bushes uh, in the Jung Yan uh, area. So that's the original growing area of Yancha. So today I'm gonna brew nothing at all uh, from there, nothing nearly as special as that. Instead, I'm going to be brewing up good old reliable sea dyke. So most of you guys probably are not familiar with sea dyke, but it is a staple at Asian at a lot of Asian grocery stores. Um, it's a brand that's historically been associated with export uh, out of China, specifically I think to Southeast Asia, and so the trend uh, for export to those places tends to be a higher roast. And, you know, I don't, don't expect fireworks out of any of these. Um, we, Denny and I reviewed a really, really cheap sea dyke tea a while back. This one goes for about 10 to 12 or $13 per tin. You get 125 grams in tin. That's a pretty good deal for Yancha. And I think, you know, honestly, I think something like this is more or less the ideal way uh, to start exploring something like Yancha. You get a nice, decent size of tea for really... Uh, Quite a cheap price, and you can take your time uh, drinking through it before moving on to more of the serious stuff. It's also pretty good grandpa style, um, and if you are lucky enough to live close to an Asian market, I would totally recommend it. So I've already rinsed this tea. We're actually just going to go straight into steep number one. And so I don't know if I've mentioned it, but this is the Sea Dyke Red Box Da Hong Pao. So I have rinsed and preheated my vessel already, and I'm going to steep that guy. So you can see it's brewing up a pretty dark color. Generally speaking, the darker the roast, um, the darker the liqueur you're going to get. I'll do one more steep. So this is a Da Hong Pao, and you know, Da Hong Pao is a really confusing term um, because it can mean a lot of things. Some people, some tea stores will just call the best wooey oolong or what they think is the best as like their Da Hong Pao. Others will offer three or four Da Hong Pao's. And with wooies, I've really found that the name on it really isn't that important most of the time unless you're really seriously getting into the tea. You can have a good Da Hong Pao, or a good tea marketed as Da Hong Pao and a very bad tea marketed as Dong Pong Pao. Um, so usually I try to let the tea uh, be the judge of that. Um, oftentimes it can mean uh, some of the clonals from it, Beidou or, um, I don't know, there's a couple other ones. We have an article on it on TDB. Uh, you can go check that out. It's oftentimes at the lower end also a blend of, I think, Shui Xian and Rogue um, and so I think because C Dyke is a relatively large operation, you can pretty much uh, be guaranteed that it is some sort of blend. Uh, they also have been interestingly known to blend some 
aged material, and I don't know how aged, probably just a few years into their thing, uh, just to create kind of a more dynamic taste. But I'm going to drink. Cheers. So it's got a very a very standard base taste. It's got uh, a lot of that mineral uh, roastedness that you can expect from Yancha. Um, the uh, it has a little bit of tartness in it, which I found to be the case for a lot of the sea dike teas. You know, I brewed this up yesterday, and I was able to taste more creaminess, and I'm not sure if it's my cold, but I'm really not detecting that at all this time around. Um, it's more, uh, more, just a little bit more standard than last time. So, it's definitely got tartness to it, and I wouldn't call it sour. Uh, it's more tart uh, in a nice sort of way. Um, it does have some aftertaste. It's not like the best aftertaste ever, but I found that it kind of hovers uh, the the sort of like bitter, roasty flavors sort of slowly become sweetness, and they can sort of sit on the roof of the mouth. Mm. So this one's a little bit better, I think. I think a little bit of that tangy creaminess is coming out. Um, Overall, the flavor is still fairly uh, similar. I think the body is a little bit better developed on the steep. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I would definitely recommend this tea as far as, like, a daily drinking yancha for those that are more poor heads or into their green teas, oolongs, uh, or whatever. Um, this would also be classified as sort of a darker tea, so it would probably go well seasonally in the autumn or winter similar to some darker pours, and and I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, if you are kind of in the dilemma of buying this versus the ultra cheap uh, box one, I would tend to lean towards this. Uh, the price differential is obviously quite significant, but the box tea, um, while it's fine, I don't think there's really need to be that cheap in spending that little money on tea. So, uh, and also you get this sort of nice little tin uh, that it comes in, and I've slowly been working my way through this over the past year, and I found, uh, found, I found this tin actually when I was visiting New York last year, so you can definitely find it uh, in your Chinatowns uh, if you live there. Uh, eBay might also be a way to find it for those uh, that aren't local to a Chinatown. You could also try Taobao or something like that. Um, but I think it's a good, important reference point uh, for people that are just getting into Yancha. Yeah, so uh, I think that wrap, about wraps up this episode. Please check out um, the Yancha article, uh, the Wui Oolong tasting that I'm drinking through. I'm drinking through a whole lot of these teas from a whole lot of vendors, so I'm unfortunately not going to be able to drink a tea from each of them or drink all these teas on the show. But you can definitely expect uh, two or three Wooly Oolong episodes coming up next. Uh, let me know how you guys like this. If you guys are all poor heads by now watching me, uh, feel free to lodge your complaints. If you'd like to see more Oolongs and stuff like that, please let me know as well. And thank you guys for watching. Cheers.